Now, you'll notice in this position, it's Paul Morphy again. We don't know the name of his opponent. But you'll notice that A1 is vacant. And that's because Paul Morphy played this game at odds. This was played in New York also in 1857. And he spotted whoever this mysterious opponent is, an entire rook. That's right, no name. One of the most popular players in the chess database is this guy, no name. It's kind of like my most popular person calling me is someone named Scam Likely. I get calls from Scam Likely multiple times a day. But anyway, he, he gave him, he, he started the game without one of his rooks. And he played E4. Now, by the way, the game I'm about to show, believe it or not, seven years later, this game was played in 1857. In 1864, Wilhelm Steinitz playing the white pieces played nearly the exact same game. Hey, uh, Shark, good to see you. So I'll let you know when the two games deviate. But it started with E4, E5, except Steinitz had his rook. Hey, Chef Waz. But Morphy's starting out one rook short. Knight f3, knight c6. So he's playing the Italian game. Juco Piano by no name. And an Evans Gambit. Playing an Evans Gambit without a rook. Bishop takes. Is Evans Gambit ex accepted? c3. Bishop a5 is main line. B4, pawn takes pawn is Pierce's defense. That's named for one or both of the Pierce brothers, uh, William Timberl Pierce and James Pierce, who wrote uh, a book on another opening called The Pierce Gambit. Hey, all right. So Pierce's defense, kingside castles, and knight f6 is Anderson's defense. For those just dropping back in, I want to point out that White started the game without his queen's rook. Bishop to a3, though, and we see this theme again of keeping the enemy king from castling. Pretty shrewd. Now that does sacrifice a pawn, but it's to gain time and open up these lines for attack. Now this move, bishop to b6, is a waste of time. There's no reason to move this bishop since it's not in any danger, nor will it be in any danger anytime soon. What he should do is block this bishop so that he can castle. This is the fourth time this bishop has moved. Remember, the bishop started out... Um, playing to c4. Then he captured the pawn, then he retreated. So four bishop moves out of eight moves so far. And we talked last week about um, injudicious moves of pieces and moving the same guy 638 times when you still have people in bed and you're not castled. Queen b3, 
And as you can see, you've got massive power along these lines. And D5, D5 blocks this attack. But he keeps his king in the center. Not a good idea. If he plays d6, even though the pawn can be taken, it's not made anymore because he can move to f8 and, and black is fine with his one rook advantage. <laughs> Little thing called hyperbole nighttime. And it's also funny. Something you wouldn't know anything about. Ooh. Burn, baby, burn. I'm a legend in my own mind. So, okay. D5. And again, these exact moves were played seven years later by Wilhelm Steinitz against another unknown player in Manchester, England. Except that was not an odds game. Steinitz had his rook. But as you'll see, it's a piece that never ends up moving. So pawn takes d5, knight to a5. Looks pretty interesting, huh? But this is not a good idea. Because his king is stuck in the center. He needs to block this diagonal. So he should have played this knight here so that he could, you know, um, castle he came here rookie one check and by the way even better uh this game was showed to me by a colleague named matakunovic even better than rookie one according to matakunovic is bishop to b5 check first then after he gets out of check, then rook e1. And that forces queen to e7. And then you take that with your bishop. Um, no. Try No, you take this bishop with check. You take the bishop with check. And then um, the king has to take. And yeah, you can see this is just crushing as well. That was the Matakunovic alternate line. Rookie one check. Bishop to e6, not king to d7. If you play king to d7, the knight just comes and forces him back. And then you've got queen b5 check. He'll have to block. You take. He'll have to try to block these lines. But there's too many lines to block. you, you got to block this line or that line. If you block this line, he opens that line. The king has to move. And then, of course, the queen's going to fall with check. And um, he has to move. If he takes the... If he takes this, that's going to lose to queen b4 check. And that forces the king back to e8. And then bishop b5 is check. He has to block with his bishop. And then um, knight to c6 is a discovered check. And, of course, uh, all he can do is block. But then... Queen e7 is checkmate. And so, yeah. So, but if he comes king c7, um, 
promote the pawn and get a new queen. And right, he's just destroyed here. You can bring the rook over here and try to get him into the game. But we just start clearing the path. Got all these queens and bishops and knights all working together. He could try to block this queen, but bishop d6 is check which forces the knight to capture it, and then the queen can come here and being defended by that queen, that's all checkmate. So back, 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 back. So in other words, he can't play king to d7. Had to move bishop e6. Pawn takes bishop. And... Here, black gives it away with knight takes queen. Now, amazingly, black can hold on if he takes the bishop. He takes the bishop. Matikunovic also showed me this. And a queen takes the knight, then queen d5 holds everything together. By taking the queen, that allows a force checkmate, starting with pawn takes pawn check, king to d7, bishop to e6 check, forcing king to c6, only legal move, knight to e5 check, king to b5, bishop to c4 check. And these first 16 moves, as I said already, were replicated by Wilhelm Steinitz against an anonymous player, someone unknown, um, seven years later in Manchester, England. Steinitz replicated Morphy's moves, and uh, his opponent replicated his cousin's moves, except up to this point. At this point, this game went king a5. In the Steinitz game, his opponent played king a4. We'll show that line in a moment. But this game, king a5, bishop b4 check, king a4, pawn takes knight, checkmate. What a checkmate. These pawns holding the bishops together. Everything being held together. What a checkmate. In the Steinitz game, seven years later, uh, his opponent said, oh, I, I'll, I'll fool you. I'll play something different than what was played against Morphy. So he went king to a4, and Wilhelm Steinitz said, oh, oh, no, I guess I'll just resign then, because after all, you played something different. Of course, don't forget, Wilhelm Steinitz had a, a rook here. In the Steinitz game, there is a rook standing right here. Let's put it on the board so that you can, uh, you can see that it's there. Oops, hello. Rook there, please. Yes. And in the Steinitz game, his, he had a rook here. Well, obviously, you can see... It's, it's literally the same thing. It's just different. You just take with the pawn first instead of, instead of the bishop. And uh, that's check. And then he's got only one legal move. Oops, sorry. I forgot to turn the moves back on. Sorry. There we go. That's check. That forces king a5. And then that's checkmate. Uh, he could have also played anywhere over here for checkmate because the rook's there. But in the Morphe game, there was no rook. So he had to checkmate that way. Lovely checkmate in both cases. But the high cost of the exposed king. <laughs> 